I put out a video last week, three interesting base defenses, and oh boy, do I have three more interesting ones for you. Hey everyone, Derpy here, welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. We are jumping directly into a replay, five abominations versus my base. It is starting out about two minutes into it, because that's how things work. I don't want you to sit around with two minutes of someone just going around my base. This player has five of the standard abomination build, and they're running in two at a time, essentially the first two, then the next three. Notice how this first abomination is already about halfway dead, and he hasn't even got to anything yet. That's because it's being hit by five different launchers, the outpost to make weapon, as well as the badger, and he's got one ship in, but it's dead. One ship help to get into the channel? That's not great, because if you go one by one by one, you won't have any ships left. At this point, he is stopped with his first ship in range of several different turrets, which was not the best path, and continues off to the right towards these portals. That's what most people instinctively do. They head towards the portals, through the channel, through the path. As you'll see the second player attacking my base, this is not always the best way to go, and is a pretty obvious weakness in my base, for, at least for myself looking back on this thing. Three more abominations run fairly close together stacked up, which means that the shockwave damage from the launchers are actually hitting more than just one ship, which is not ideal. He decides to go ahead and kill the badger, and then continue on to the base. At this point, he has a lot of abominations doing a lot of splash damage to these portals, which we'll get back to, and does enough to get through this last one and actually into the base. He is in range of several different turrets, the highest damage zone in my base at the exact moment, and his abominations are quickly dying. He's spending too much time centered in that central area. He gets through the third portal and lets loose all the different badgers, and that's about an average hit. Let's now jump to a much better hit. This player attacking me right now saw the last base defense video I made and said, those were smucks, I can do way better. Let's see how he does. Spoiler alert, he wins. In this first battle, the abomination is heading straight forward, and notice this one at the front is very, very fast and has siege mortars on it. This is, again, for lots and lots of combat speed. This thing only does damage through the built-in weapon. Nothing else on here matters whatsoever in terms of actually doing damage. This first one goes for is a great tank. Notice he's sending in all five of these abominations very, very quickly. Number one heads off to the right here and grabs the anti-rocket launch pad turret, as well as the different the first portal. And the other ones are actually going to head off to the right initially. He's going to actually think better of it and send that second cluster of regular corrosive damage ones off to the left. While ship number two does continue to head forward and grab a few portals, if he can get up to that. Notice that there are not really many launchers shooting on him at the exact moment. He is in the firing arc of one of them, but one is not all five, so he is taking much less damage. Ship number two is about dead, but not before it gets that second portal to roughly two-thirds health. The other three ships are all stacked up, which is perfectly fine, because he's not taking a ton of damage. I don't have any volcanic mortars or anything that actually do only splash damage, so he's getting through here grabs the third portal, and focuses onto the Overlord, which, now that he's killed Badger number 5, has zero negative effects. Still one or two Decimators shooting at him, but that shouldn't be enough to kill him. Except, wait, here are the mines, and he is hitting the mines with stacked up ships, even though he knows exactly where they are, because he watched the last video I put out. One ship is dead, tries an unstacked to do so, uh, to, so we can have a higher chance of getting in here, but with two Badgers and one Piranha left, he isn't going to be able to do enough, and he's going to end up sunk, especially because he still has to get out of the base, get stunned a little bit at the last minute by the weapons lab, and it's too little, too late, just pretty close battle here, didn't quite get in. Let's see if I was lucky, or if I wasn't. In battle number three here, this is the same player number two, which is a really good hitting player. He's attacking with a very similar strategy to last round. The two high-speed ships, which I assume have lots of evade and lots of building damage, go straight forward, and those are going to clear out a few things along the way here. Notice the first ship is taking lots of damage, so it's important to close in quickly and have all five go in at the same time. He's going to do things a little bit differently, one of which he's already done, and he rocketed one of my warehouses, which had fire support too off to the right here, so it's doing way less damage because there isn't a fire support too. Maybe not initially, but once some of these other things get killed, it will certainly help him, at least on the attacking side. Sends ship 1 and 2 off to the right again, and maybe gets more of a portal with ship 1. I got less lucky on the accuracy and evade game, or something else happened and he drove better. 
The other three ships are going to head off to the left here again, which is in range of very few turrets, which you'll notice player number one did not do. Player number two, being a much better hitter, is aware of this thing and is not just charging directly in all through the three portals. Now that a few of these short range turrets are dead, he is going to continue going forward here and is going to try and creep and outrange and not charge into the last two decimators as early as possible. Let's see how much damage he can do to this third portal and the, any of these surrounding badgers, and he does let out a few of them. They are charging towards his fleets. You will notice, however, he is splitting a few things up and is going to have one ship go out front at a time, which means those mines are only going to damage one ship instead of all four or five that are left, which is a pretty big advantage. Two decimators left, but with no overlord carrier, he gets through quite quickly. I may need to consider moving those two around. Then again, these last few ships are heading towards him, and they're going to do some damage to his fleet, but the Piranha really dies too quickly, and the fourth badger is not alive for too much longer versus these corrosive weapons. He's still in range of a few launchers, which are going to grab the lowest health and closest ship, respectively. And one more mine at the bottom here, and a little bit of a last-ditch effort to see if he can possibly get through. But this guy has two ships, one of which is more than half health, and the other of which is healthy enough to withstand the little damage that the Omega weapon does, and he gets through, and my base is going to be flat. No key buildings left on the outside, just the outpost to go, and this player is going to win. You may be wondering, okay, what were the differences between that first, second, and third hits? The first hit was not real great, just charged directly in. The second hit didn't have the... Uh, bunker Buster on the warehouse, and was still mostly stacked up against the mines, which wasn't great. So kudos to this player, there is no unbeatable base, there may be ones that are harder or easier than others, but he did, not, he did a nice job. We're only about 7 minutes into the video, and a few of you have been asking for the layout. I figured I should probably go ahead and give it to you. If you're in my alliance and don't like me sharing my layout, then you don't have to watch this video, you don't have to copy it. In fact, I strongly recommend you don't copy this. I think you'll have a much stronger base if you don't have a few of the weaknesses here, and you'll do better if there's a new ship in a year from now, a conqueror, defender, whatever else, that completely changes things. I would rather have you understand how to build your base and how to equip things, rather than copying something that has a few weaknesses, which of course I will talk about. Let's briefly go over the, a few things, the first of which is the guard fleet. First is the Overlord Carrier. This thing has mortar damage as well as projectile speed and is really an explosive damage ship. It does not do a whole ton versus the tier 10 abominations, but does do more versus, say, if someone tries to bring a Basilisk still and does do a little bit of chip damage to things at long range. It is, however, still very useful for its uh, combat speed debuff on its tactical field. Quite useful for that alone. I would use it if it had no weapons, so the three mortars here are just a little bit of a benefit. Also, quick note, I do have the Kixai hash code in the builds in a builds document in the description of my YouTube videos. Go ahead, click on the link, and that will bring you up to that. I also do have three different badgers in here. Two of them have the same build. This is a high combat speed, high evade badger that also does a fair amount of concussive damage. The one change I've made on these since I last talked about them was I dropped agility, agility uh, Agility System 4 for a Concussive Force. This is to increase Concussive Damage much more because you need it versus the Abominations. You still don't do any damage unless you have a crit from PDX Payload, but it does help. Those crits are more damaging than without uh, Concussive Force, and no one was really doing anything that Agility System 4 would benefit from anyway. So I have ships at 2 and 4 built like that. Ship 5 is a Concussive Badger again, has still high evade, and this one has a sync drive. You can see that the sync drive says ship will match the speed of the slowest in the fleet, and that is one that is currently alive. My overlord carrier has zero combat speed, so do things such as the gatekeeper. So if the overlord carrier is alive, this thing does not move. If you kill the overlord, then this does start moving, which might actually be a benefit for me, and you saw that in the last base defense video I put out here. Also note that the Badgers do have a few special abilities. One of them is dupl Duplicate or Cap 1, so you only get one benefit from this. Having three Badgers all in the same area doesn't affect anything, but it doesn't have any negative effects either for having three instead of one. It reduces your building damage as well as your regular damage, which is great. You want ships to do less damage to your portals and your ships and your buildings and things like that. 
So this is a benefit in having one a little bit out further ahead is something a few people I think are overlooking. And again, I also have a Piranha, which I'm not totally sure if a tier 9 chip is still useful with only 150 million armor points, but it does have a few debuffs in the Forge Fire Thrower, you know, getting the uh, deflection bonus down on these things, having things have less deflection, 500,000 instead of 600,000, well, that may very well be worth it and could allow you to do some damage. Again, pretty high evade. This also does have a few special abilities that slows people down a little bit. Let's put this back in the defending slot before someone goes ahead and hits me while I'm recording a video. Quickly jumping into a few of the different turrets, I have different Latakuta launchers on the long range. Many folks are using, as well as, uh, they're using seven long range turrets and five short range. I tend to go with uh, five long range and seven short range. All the badgers are pretty capable short range things in the base anyway. Now, if I take a look at that, this turret does have penetrative plates. We will get back to that. And it does have uh, lots of radioactive damage and a decent amount of accuracy. Potentially not the best specials. I'm not even sure if heavy ballistic shells is worth it. The projectile speed bonus doesn't really do a lot because this is not a splash weapon. It's an accuracy weapon. This does tend to go with more damage rather than more accuracy. I do have a few different launchers that have sm smart warheads, which is better than priority targeting just barely, and this is so it has more accuracy, as well as targets the lowest health ship, so someone with an exterminator can't just prep on my overlord carrier, carrier, which is one of the weaknesses we will get into. Some folks are also running volcanic mortars. I think the build I have saved up for those off the top of my head is probably this one labeled Mort, and it has a projectile speed slash explosive damage build. There is another one that some folks are using instead, but I think this one should work pretty well. And the downside with this is it does have a very, very high minimum range. It needs to be placed quite far away. In terms of short range turrets, my decimators are equipped like so, and it does just have single target damage, trying to maximize that in terms of crit crits, as well as ballistic damage. And priority targeting accuracy is always great. You do just about go overpower if you try and add another one of those on here in terms of the actual turret itself power, at least at level 11. I also am running two different baffle turrets, and these do splash damage, which is fantastic because people still tend to run stacked in today's game because it's easier to do so. This thing is, of course, maximizing projectile speed, concussive reload, and concussive damage. I also have all this possible because I have seven or six different power transformers. I will be adding a few more if I possibly can. I think I own all 10 blueprints we can possibly own today. These are equipped like so. You have to have no weapons and or something that does two damage, so nothing. And a PT transformer. You can equip solar panels or solar armors if you want. That will help out just a little bit. It does add a lot of base power, effectively meaning you only have 12 real turrets to work with. The other turrets I am running that are actually somewhat useful in today's game include the different anti-rocket turrets. These things are anti-launch anti pad rocket turrets, such as the Bunker Buster. I think with these specials, accuracy works, even though I didn't think it was supposed to, but it means people with Bunker Busters are not able to get through to my uh, portals if these things are alive. You did notice in the replay, someone did kill this first one, and you could have rocketed it then at that point if you timed it perfectly. Some people are also using one of these near one of these buildings on the outside, these warehouses, to stop someone from rocketing it and forcing them to send a ship around. If you're sneaky, you can also hide it just behind the Great Hall here so you're not actually sure it's there. You might get one or two sneaky wins off that if you are lucky again with that. I have them covering my portals because that's what people like to rocket, especially three all grouped up there. A few other random things include my outpost, which has several different uh, equipped specials on here or tactical modules, including the Omega Executioner, which is great. It means I don't have to worry about basilisks too much at all. Also does have overloaded reload mechanisms, RB1 reload buffer, which has a large effect across the entire, entire battlefield rather than just close. Also fire support 2 and ion storm accelerator. This one makes you immune to pinches, which someone tried in the previous battle. The different warehouses tend to have fire support 2 as well as EMP stun, which helps out a little bit and stuns you for 3 seconds before you actually throw on the stun resist on all ships. I also do have things, uh, ion storm accelerator again, which gives you a little bit of accuracy and makes you immune to different fields, which is again, pretty good thing. 
A few warehouses I did earlier have over closer where these labs are here had stuff like the RB1 reload buffer as well. And again, EMP blast just to annoy people a little bit if they're hitting with things that have a low stun resist. My labs just have EMP blast because that is annoying and they really don't do anything else. That's a few things I have right here. Let's now talk about weaknesses of this space, which is why I don't want you copying this. One big weakness is that the Overlord Carrier is preppable. If you park an exterminator right about here on this Conquest Yard, they can snipe out the Overlord Carrier with their built-in missile because that shoots over mountains. For that reason, I do have the turrets trying to cover that area, so you can't really do that too well, but it is still possible you can take two executioners, park them right there, or exterminators, whichever one you want to call them, and charge in with an abomination, and that should take most of the fire. That is also a reason why I do have priority targeting on a few of these launchers, so it does target those exterminators, at least initially, and does some damage to you. If this thing could be targeted by Hellswarms without being in range of anything, I would be in for a very sad day. But it can't, so that's great. Weakness number two is that these portals are all stacked together. This means an abomination that does a lot of splash damage will do a lot of damage towards your portals, and targeting just the center one will do some amount of damage to all three of them. That is a weakness. I could solve that by moving one of these things off over here or something, but I have to play around with land tiles. I don't really want to do that. Weakness number three is this far left is not, there are not a lot of turrets actually pointed here. I may have to do something like rotate around some of these different decimators, so I hopefully do more damage in that area or rotating around some of these uh, long range mortar or long range launchers, so I do a bit more damage to that area, but I miss out on things on the back half, which is a bit disappointing. Let's go ahead and jump into base planner for this last few minutes of the video to show you the third or the fourth and final weakness, at least that I'm talking about. That is that my island is actually snipeable. This would be really, really bad if I was using a basilisk, but it's not quite as bad with trenchers. Trenchers don't do a ton of damage, but someone could park it just at the top right here above this wind turbine, and they could snipe out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half tiles. I'm not quite seven and a half, so I'm going to get damaged, and people can snipe these last three turrets with a trencher. It's not great, but that is why I do have a missile defense system three on these, uh, or rather a missile protector plate based armor on these last three, three things to avoid some of that snipeable damage. Hopefully, this video did give you a few ideas about a base and how to possibly make one, and what stats you might want to use and what things might be important for turrets, as well as a general concept. Again, I don't want to see people copying these because this is not the best base out there. I'd rather you take the concepts and leave the actual layout, but if you do want it, it is here. I'm showing you the screenshots. I can't stop you from doing anything. I'm just really at the end of the day trying to help you. Go ahead and let me know if you do have a question on any of the stuff I've talked about. I will do my best to get back to you. I will probably not be making any videos this raid for reasons I will get back into. But as always, and until next time, this is Derby signing out, helping you be a better pirate.